I got a boa constrictor at home, and the man at the reptile show said this would be one of my best first poisonous snakes. I think it's one of them Bushmasters. Whatever you do if you're a vendor, do not sell that guy a snake. <laughs> I've been getting asked this question in comments. I've been getting emails. I've been getting all kind of crazy stuff. What's the best first venomous snake to keep? And I got to give you my opinion. And I hope that my opinion matters a little bit to some of y'all. This is what I truly believe. And the best first venomous snake for anybody is somebody else's okay I know that sounds a little bit like oh well, he don't want nobody to have snakes <laughs> and that, that's not the case I would rather see somebody that's wanting to venture into the venomous community and handling venomous snakes and working with venomous creatures to get training from somebody who is skilled who is familiar with the animals and you can go to their place and learn and not just for you know, I don't know, 500 hours or whatever. I mean, I'm, I mean, literally hang out with them for, for a year and learn the animals and learn proper procedures and learn bite protocols and learn everything you need to know that encompasses venomous reptiles. Because when you make this jump into venomous reptiles, this isn't like keeping your, your normal snakes. It's, it's, it's a whole different mindset. It's all of a sudden, you know, you're not reaching into a cage picking up your pet snake you're not you're not grabbing a boa or a python or or, or or a colubrid you know everything is stemming off of this off of tools and procedures and it's it's a hands-off situation and it's 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 a it's a skill set and it's learning a lot of different things not just learning how to use a hook it's learning protocols it's just so my first thing i will tell you is if you're going to ask somebody What's the best first venomous snake for you? I'm going to say, if you're asking me that question, you shouldn't have a venomous snake. Not yet, because you're not ready. Because you haven't spent the time with a mentor learning what is best for you and where is the best place to start. But after you have spent some time with a mentor and you've learned some protocols and you learn some basic handling skills and you're ready to venture out on your own and, and start with your own venomous species, there is some things that are that I truly believe are the best way to start. Now, I know that there is a lot of stuff available. I mean, the reptile shows um, online, different breeders. There's a lot of stuff available, and everybody is into the real pretty arboreal stuff. And just because it's smaller, and and we're going to get into that. And I'm going to tell you why and why not. But for me, my beliefs is if you live here in the U.S. And you're going to start out with your first hot, okay? This is what I truly believe. Your best first hot is this. Now, in this bucket is what I believe is the best first venomous snake for a novice that's just getting into keeping hots. Okay? Now... Now, there's a reason for this. There's actually a lot of reasons for this. Now, this is a Keisterdon Contoratrix Latisinctus. This is, this is the Texas Copperhead or Broadband Copperhead, but I'm talking about Copperheads in general, okay? And they are probably one of the best first venomous snakes to keep. And there's still a set of rules that goes with this. I mean, this snake still has the capability of hurting you, you still can be hospitalized, and you still will need medical attention if you suffer a bite from this snake. But, I'm going to put this guy in his bucket, and I know this video isn't going to be showing a lot of snakes, but this video is going to be answering some questions for y'all, okay? But this little guy, notice he's not real crazy, he's not flipping out. And that's just the way I do things. I platform things when I got them hooked. 
Littler stuff like this. Not like Gomer that had that big Bushmaster out swinging it around the room. <laughs> but let's put him back. Okay, now, I say Copperhead because of these factors. Now, these are the pros and the cons. Now, if you live here in the States, the first thing you've got to really look into is your laws. You've got to know your jurisdiction laws, your state laws, on what you can keep. And in some states, you can keep native species, which is great. Some states, you can't. And, you know, you can still keep an exotic. So, you know, getting with a mentor and learning your exotics and your native things is the way to go. But with the, with the copperhead, I mean, it's a... It's, it's not a treacherous, lethal snake to begin with. I mean, they can be cranky, they can be nasty, but they're easy to care for, and bites are seldom fatal. But, now here's, this is a fact. This ain't me just shooting this off the top of my head. I looked into this earlier today. There has been five documented deaths since the year 2000, from a Keystradon Contoratrix, okay? And the interesting thing of it was is they were all males over 40 years old. And the bites were accredited to, to uh, secondhand things that happened after the bite. But some of them, uh, I, th I think two of them were, were, were like almost immediate. I mean, the bite, 20, 30 minutes later, they went into like a uh, cardiac arrest and, and boom, died. But it's all attributed to the snake bite. But anyways, now here's my second reason for saying native. Native, native, native. Native snakes, if you live in the United States, is any venom. Okay? If you're going to venture into your first hot and you want to keep exotics, any venom isn't available. It's really not that available. Unless you've got somebody who has that species and they had their antivenom, or you're close to a zoo, or, or, or you're close, or if you're in Florida with, with Venom 1, who actually keeps some antivenom stocked up, but 90% of the time, it's not available. And zoos are not, they're not, like, obligated to give up their antivenom. Neither are serpentariums. Neither am I. I mean, I keep a, I keep a stock of antivenom for all my animals, but the thing is, is natives, if you do suffer a bite and you have an accident, you've got a fallback plan. You've got somewhere to go. You can, you can seek medical attention. If you get bit by that little copperhead, Crofab. Almost every hospital carries it. Or Anivip. I mean, you know, our local antivenoms, I mean, which they stock for our local animals. So I tend to lean towards the native stuff. If you don't like copperheads, I mean... Pygmy rattlesnakes is a good first starter. I mean, they're small. They're cranky little bastards, too, and they're bitey, but they're very interesting. They're colorful. There's, there's, there's subspecies of the little Carolina reds. I used to breed a bunch of them. I love pygmy rattlesnakes. I don't keep any no more. I keep the Mexican ones, but let me tell you, I mean, that's a good first starter hot because, you know, it's not... It's, it's, if, it, if you suffer a bite, it's not going to kill you. It's, it's not like keeping a damn something that's going to really maim you, hurt you, give you lifelong effects after a bite. So I lean towards native stuff if you live here. So that's my reasoning for those those animals. But even like a false water cobra, you know, uh, uh, a gigas, you know, I mean, it's a rear fang snake. And it's not native, but it's a really mild animal and it's not going to kill you. Here's the thing. If you spend time with a mentor and you've learned about all the animals, you would know what you want to venture into. You might decide that, no, I don't like that arboreal stuff. I like the terrestrial vipers, and I want to start with a copperhead, or I want to start with a little pygmy rattlesnake, or maybe even a smaller species of rattlesnake, like a little uh, a Mitchellai, which is like the speckled rattlesnakes, or, or, or a banded rock rattlesnake, something really pretty and small. You know, because a lot of guys start out with a damn western diamondback. And I'm going to tell you, I used to do westerns. I had I bred the albinos. I've done all that stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. Westerns are both ends of the spectrum. It's a bad bite. And you see them everywhere. The reptile shows. All the morphs and everything now. But people get in that mindset like, well, everybody's got them. I see them everywhere. So that'd be a good first starter snake. No, it's not. It's not a good first starter snake. Some of them can be complete assholes. I mean, it can be just treacherous, mean psycho for no reason at all. And that's a whole different set of rules with a Western. 
even with a Western Diamondback, a bite can be fatal. So it's a lot to think about. It really is a lot to think about. But I lean towards my advice would be pygmy rattlesnakes, copperhead, achistrodon, cystaris. You know, good first starter after you've had your training, after you've spent some time with a mentor. I get a lot of guys ask me about arboreal stuff. And the arboreal stuff, let me tell you, of course, it's, it's, it's not native, it's exotic, okay? And the hottest snake on the market right now is Atheria squamager, your squams. Well, there's quite a few other ones that are very popular right now, the, the Nitsii, which I used to have in breed those, but I've never kept squamagers. But I've got two buddies that breed them, and, and I've seen their collections and seen how these things act. Some of them are little knuckleheads. I mean, they have a hard time hooking them, getting them in and out of the cage. It's a whole different set of skills to work with a squamager. I mean, they're not just a, a docile little snake that curls up on a limb. And, I mean, um, and they're cool. Oh, I love them. I mean, they got them heavily kilted scales. They look like a dragon. I mean, they're awesome. But let me tell you something that you may not know about that they're a squamager. There's no anti-venom for that snake. And as much as you see them, you better believe something. There is no anti-venom, and they're not as harmless as everybody thinks they are. Everybody thinks like, well, they're a mild venom, they're, they're nothing. No, they are hot. That is a venomous little son of a bitch. They are extremely hot. And just because of the size and the venom yield, they may not kill a bunch of people, but it's a bad bite. And there's no anti-venom. What they're doing is, the bites that have occurred, they're trying, they're, they're actually, uh, they were applying Echis antivenom, which is soft scale antivenom, which we all know soft scale viper is one of the deadliest damn snakes in Africa. And it, it attributes to massive amounts of death. And it doesn't work. Soft scale viper antivenom, Echis antivenom does not work on your pretty little squamager that you have in your living room in your Exoterra aquarium. So that's a whole different set of things you need to think about. Okay, so, I mean, I think squams are cool. I, I love them. I think they're an awesome little snake. But I've dealt with them firsthand at my buddy's place, and I've seen how some of them are, they'll hang on a hook and they're fine. Some of them are coming at your mouth open, repeated strikes, and they're little knuckleheads. And they're, they're, they're cheeky little guys. <laughs> so, it's a lot to think about. But... On the other end of the spectrum, if you if, if you do want to do arboreal and you have that skill set and you think, well, I want something pretty, you know, then you're going to look at the eyelash vipers. And I lean more towards the eyelash. I mean, I love eyelash. I breed them. I, I got a bunch of them. We'll go in the reptile in the, in the eyelash viper room and I'll show you some eyelash vipers. Okay, we jumped over to the to the eyelash room, and see, I've I've got a bunch of them. Well, these are our baby bush masters, and this is our room where we keep our all of our lachesis. Well, most of our lachesis, and all of our slags. And now we can talk about our boreals. Okay, um, we were talking about squams, and, and the thing is, is with squams is the venom toxicity, no anti venom, and the other factor of it is is you know, keeping them. You need that skill set to do arboreals. Arboreals ain't easy to do. I mean, like, we do a whole room of them. This room is controlled. I mean, you got to think about humidity. You got to think about the perfect photo period. Temperatures in here. It's, look, I mean, nobody would even believe this. This room stays, be that's a high, 77 degrees. That's how high the temperature gets in here. That's as warm as I let this room get. And it gets down to 75. And it, and it will even drop a little bit lower. But look at my humidity. And that's all the stuff you got to take into consideration when you're keeping arboreals and where the arboreals come. Like squams, you keep them a little warmer. They're, they're actually like semi-arid. They're, they're like sub-Saharan Africa. So, you know, the biggest mistake a lot of guys make with them is they spray the heck out of them and they soak them down and they keep them wet. And... You know, they, the guys that I know that breed them, they keep them pretty dry. Arboreals are more of a, I mean, for, for a starter snake, a first hot snake, I don't think arboreals is the way to go. 
I mean, they are, they're for a more advanced keeper. Someone that's got some more experience. It's more of the husbandry end of it. There's a lot to learn on the husbandry end. That's where you learn that stuff from your mentor who keeps our boils, who keeps pit vipers, who keeps cobras, who keeps all the stuff that we love. But that's the whole other spectrum of it. So I can't say this enough is, is like mentorship, mentorship, mentorship. Get with somebody and figure out what you like and learn about all of it. Then pick your direction that you want to go that that you like. With me, my direction, I've, I've done it all. I've been doing this 35 years. My direction is large terrestrial pit vipers. That's what I love. You know, lachesis. I like all my crotalids. I like all my bothrops. And that's the stuff I work with and breed. But I like my little pretty eyelash vipers. This is my little hobby. Oh, and my king cobras. <laughs> my wife's like, and the king cobras. But these, these are my little hobbies. That I, that I love my little schlegs. You know, anti-venom for schlegs is not inaccessible. You know, it can be got. I have it. If I can get it, anybody can get it. Other things, the African, the therapist things, harder to get that stuff. But, I mean, I, I keep African anti-venom for my, I keep a, a, a polyvalent for my, my big African, my, my gaboons and my puff adders and stuff. And it's hard to get. Those are just my thoughts on, on first starter snakes. But let me tell you, um, I mean, I love eyelash. If you're going to go that direction, I think eyelash vipers for an arboreal is a little bit better of a choice than a squam. And believe me, I love squams. And if they ever make an antivenom for them, I'll probably get some. I mean, what a beautiful little specimen. And this was an adult. This was an adult male. Now, males don't get quite as big as females. Females get larger. Males are smaller. They're sexually dimorphic. Males are smaller. Females get bigger, heavier bodied, but Bothrop Shalegliai. I mean, and like I said, you got to have the husbandry skills to keep these. Because if you keep them incorrectly, you'll just kill them, you know. And they're actually kind of delicate, you know. It's, it's temperature, humidity, feeding, and, you know, I mean, this is what they turn into. And don't get you know, duped into buying a baby eyelash viper at a reptile show. These, I produce these right here. These, these were born four months ago. And the thing is, is they're eating. They're doing great. They're, they just started taking their one-day-old pinkies. And for someone to buy this and go, well, I can do that. He's already eating pinkies. It's not that simple. You still need that skill set to feed this thing because they're so skittish and they're so delicate. If you don't feed them the right way, they won't eat. They'll spit it out. You'll end up paying $250, $300 for this little tiny squirt. I mean, and this is actually well started. This is four months old for an eyelash viper. It's the skill set to do it. So it's all that stuff you want to take in consideration before making the jump into the venomous hobby. For us, this is our life. And for me and Dina both, this is what we do. But if you're getting in the hots and you want to think about getting your first venomous snake, consider what I said and get a mentor. And talk it over with a mentor. Get some training, you know. But you can't deny it, though. I mean, these are hard to pass up. <laughs> Here, Bubba. There you go. If you got questions, leave it in the comment section. I try to get to you guys. It's just, it's time. If I had more time, I would be able to sit for five hours and go through the comments. But what I do takes a lot of my time. It takes a lot of my life. <laughs> you know, I don't get to go out and snake hunt like I used to even because I'm, I'm in here taking care of captive animals. But consider everything I said, guys. Laws. Species. Your location, any venom, native or non-native, you know, toxicity. There's a lot of things that come into play that you need to truly think about. If you see Gomer at a reptile show, sell him a gaboon. Oh, that, you know what? I'm, I'm glad my wife just said that. Gaboon viper, worst first venomous snake. Stay away from that one. As cool as they are, as beautiful as they are, go back and watch some of my old videos, some of the strike scene videos. 
with the Boones. They strike upside down, backwards, unpredictable. Just I, that, That's the worst first venomous to ever get in your life. <laughs> just to answer some of the questions that have been coming at me and, and, and to hit on this topic. And let's bury this. And our next video, we'll do something fun and exciting. But if you're new to the channel, hit the logo. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss an opportunity to see any of my videos. And come on back to Venom Central. This is Willie checking out. Later.